So being Cajun, probably the biggest or funnest thing in Cajun is maybe just the way we talk. No matter where we go in the country or anywhere, they, they figure out you're from Louisiana. You know, we know where you're from, you're from Louisiana. 12 Star over here, we, we run about 135 head of mama cows, and every October we have our bow sale, and we sell about 45 bows, and we can have about maybe 15 to 20 heifers. I guess we have farming in the, in the Roussel blood, because in the, in the early 1700s is when we have records of our family farming in Louisiana. There's nothing like Louisiana when it comes down to food and, and you know, we can go crabbing, we can go fishing. You know, where we're crabbing today, that, that was our backyard. That was our playground and growing up as kids, and still is. No! <laughs> One of the interesting thing is, every section of Louisiana has their own culture, and I took a fiddle lesson in Lafayette just so I can learn the, the music culture of Lafayette. We have a jam group, we call ourselves the P-Town Ramblers, and we just play music from all spectrums, you know, and, and we just like to entertain and play, and it's just a way to forget about the rest of the world. We like to have a good time. On a full-time basis, what we do is we own a store called Roussel's, and it's a, it's a jewelry gift store. I just fell in love with the diamond business and, and everything, the aspect of it, and dealing with that customer and the emotional side of, of selling diamond rings. I believe that, I guess, God sends you with certain gifts, and, and, and when something touches your heart, you know, forget about anything else you're doing, chase it. So when we started uh, raising Angus cattle in South Louisiana, I remember going to a sale with my neighbor, an uh, all-breed production sale, bow sale, and it was quick to notice that the Angus cattle were selling faster and higher than the rest of the breeds. And then I went to a female sale with a friend, and same thing happened. Angus cattle all sold. They had demand for them. The rest of the breeds were a little sluggish, and I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, why would you raise anything out? I was snake bitten with, with Angus cattle. And then it was like, all right, I want to grow me a herd that produces and, and been respected in the state of Louisiana. Everything was new to me. Being a first generation Angus breeder, but being in a retail business, we knew that customer service was A number one. And that was our first priority, customers and raising good cattle. And I know trends come and go, but if I get a vision in my mind of what I want, then I, I'm not one that's gonna stray off or be convinced to go a different way. I just felt like that Angus mama was just a great mama and, and the bow ahead of demand for it and trying to breed things that are maternal and low birth weight with a lot of growth. And, and that was sort of like our goal for the last probably 10, 12 years on that. On the rewarding side of the cattle, kids just growing up in the junior side of Angus, you know, I mean, they would say, what are y'all doing here? You know, you're jewelry store owners. But we understood that if you, your kids had to take care of the animals and the responsibility to learn, you know, they're the future of everything. You want them to express ideas because it's a changing world out there. You know, since having retail stores, you have to get away from there. You can have the hardest day of work and get here in the evening and fall in love with the outside world, you know, just getting your hands dirty and ride through your cows and, and all your problems go away. Something about being next to Yanga's cattle, it's just, a, it's just some mystique about it. <laughs>